I'm here to talk today about the future of CAD. And it, it's a very interesting time in CAD. We're seeing a lot of um, changes going on. And it's really, a, really the changes are from um, what's enabled by 3D manufacturing. And, you know, the, it's, a, it's an interesting process. There's a lot of technologies around. And I'm here to show you how we're contributing and what we're doing to help usher in the fourth generation of CAD which we really believe is about designing for 3D manufacturing, but also supporting um, traditional manufacturing techniques as well. So I'm just going to walk through some slides really quickly to tell you more about our company, Frustum Inc., and then talk about our products and technology and give you, with as much time left as I have, a couple of demos. And the demos will be about our own web application called Generate, which allows you to do CAD agnostic topology optimization. Um, it's a very easy to use application, which we are constantly um, updating. And then TrueSolid, which are, is our proprietary geometry kernel, which we built in-house and have been working on since our inception, which was in 2013 in New York. Um, so generative design um, is really the fourth generation of CAD. And the, the reason this is so much paired with 3D manufacturing is that generative design allows you to make fantastic uh, design freedoms you really just couldn't do before and explore functions you couldn't explore before with traditional CAD. But traditional CAD really came off of the drawing desk in the 1960s on mainframe computing with 2D drafting into the 1970s with Generation 2 CAD, which was wireframe based and then surface based, and um, into Generation 3, which is parametric. So this is really more mainstream CAD products as we know about uh, the, the major um, products out there like um, SolidWorks and SolidEdge, NX, Dassault Systems, CATIA, et cetera. And Really, the technology, the underlying technology and the manufacturing processes haven't changed tremendously. Um, and we really think that it, the time is now for a generative approach and a ground-up redo about how we, we uh, not only design, but what core technologies we use for 3D manufacturing. Um, companies really want the uh, benefits of additive manufacturing and generative CAD to lower human capital expense, increase productivity and employee engagement, deliver better products faster, and really fully leverage advanced manufacturing, 3D manufacturing. And the existing four-year-old core technology doesn't uh, really work well to explore all of this design complexity that we have at our fingertips now. Generative design's complexity is indeterminate. We don't know where the geometry is going to be sometimes. For instance, in topology optimization, we don't know where the topology optimization will connect between certain um, uh, contact points. We know that there will be geometry between the contact points, but where and how and what shape it's in, we really don't know about until it happens. And same with complex structures like lattices and mesostructures and um, all of these really neat ways to start filling in shapes or experimenting with design that we, we couldn't do before. Um, that's not something that you really want to be able to, uh, or how do I say, it's not something you want to model by hand and then control directly with a parametric ap approach or a surface-based approach. Um, so for us, uh, we started by making true solid. That's a volumetric geometry kernel, which really is um, our technology. And we have licensed to a few partners I'll describe. And it, it's what makes designs like this possible. So here we're seeing um, traditional CAD, surface-based CAD, blended um, perfectly with highly complex indeterminate generative geometry. On the left, we have types of cellular structure. This is known as a gyroid. It's one type of a cellular structure. And on the right, we've done a little bit of topology optimization for this, what we just call this our space wrench. It's just a, a fun design we did to, to show what some of the technology can do. So for us, it's very important to, to usher in um, this next generation and you know, work really closely with traditional CAD, but really we see ourselves um, helping to, to bring in a new design paradigm. And again, allow, and that's by allowing indeterminate geometry to blend together with engineering intent precisely. 
So really what's impossible with generation 3 CAD just takes seconds with true solid, our geometry kernel. And I'll give you a little demonstration of what that's like in a little bit. Um, we've integrated with Siemens, that's our first channel partner, so I'm sure you've seen some really cool topology optimization work today from uh, Siemens NX and Solid Edge. We are doing some work with Onshape too. Um, we, our own web app will be more closely aligned with Onshape over the, over the course of the year. And um, just again, you know, we're striving to make generative design functional with our geometry kernel and our channel partners and our own products. Um, so Generate, it's a web application. We, we um, allow you to import a CAD file, apply forces to the CAD file, and download a manufacturer-ready part. So it's running our core technology, true solid. Um, because it's on the cloud, you can experiment and run many optimizations simultaneously, which is a nice feature of it. Then true solid itself, um, the underlying technology, can allow you to do topology optimization and simulation, et cetera. Um, also taking into account highly complex structures, keeping manufacturability in mind at every step of the way. Um, so let me just uh, show a little demo of the two. First, I'll just start with Generate. So this is our website. It's free to use. You can log in um, or make an account and, and try it out. Just go to the top here and click on Generate. Um, You can register here or log in. <coughs> Once you log in, I'm already logged in. I just want to make sure that it takes that into account. Yeah, um, I'm logged in already. We have some sample projects to start learning how to use this tool. Um, even if you're really experienced with topology optimization, there are some things that are vastly different in our system. That um, So it's helpful to try out these projects, but then also um, we have tutorial videos here you can learn from. Um, the one I've been working on here is this GE bracket, and all you have to do is clone it, and it's going to copy it into your projects. Um, while it's copying, I'm just going to open up some optimizations I've already done, and I'll walk you through how this interface works. We've tried to keep it very lightweight and easy to use, um, but here we have design constraints, boundary conditions, and optimization process to uh, watch a process running. I've already, again, I've already run these optimizations so we can take a look at it. But the bottom line is you can upload a single part, which um, I'm going to just show the original design space here. This is what was worked on. You can apply various design constraints, which I'll describe in the other optimizations I've run. And you also have boundary conditions. In the typical and traditional way of using topology optimization, loads have been applied manually. And you can see them just registering here. And when you run new projects, you can edit all these vectors and values to put your precise engineering requirements into this part. Um, so to start, I ran an optimization which was um, There we go. Um, a lower resolution optimization, but you can see our geometry kernel's power at work in which indeterminate geometry, which has been topology optimi optimized, is flowing perfectly into the hard points of connections. So there's no real remodeling required here. Um, now, we will be exposing more um, direct modeling capabilities onto this, so you, you'll be able to do some post work on your designs, apply infill patterns, et cetera. But for right now, this is um, you, you know, uh, the state of the product. Um, this one had no design constraints, excuse me, on it, but this one had an extrusion constraint. And you can see up here, I applied this extrusion constraint, and it's just informing the optimizer to project all the generative geometry down to what could be um, a base plate or the axis that this part could even be milled. Um, so this could be considered a self-supporting optimization or structure in a 3D printing process or something that could be three axis milled if, if uh, undercuts are taken into consideration from the design space. Um, I'm going to look at another optimization I've run. In this case, we have more detail, and 
we just let it be free form. And you can really see that it's adapting to the user requirements and loads and still blending all the geometry in together very nicely. But definitely it would have to be 3D printed. I don't think this could be five axis milled, especially with this uh, strut appearing in the bottom of the part. So again, design freedoms with 3D manufacturing can be explored that we really can't explore with other manufacturing techniques. And this last one I'll pull up here, it's um, this one I've, I've specified for it to uh, be a little more self-supporting. So it's still intended to be 3D printing, but notice how this um, strut has now blended into the ceiling of this design and then there's no cavities in, in this area now. So it's intended to be more of a self-supporting design. That's one of the issues with additive manufacturing is reducing the um, amount of material you use. And one way you can do that is reducing the amount of support structure required in a metal part, for instance. Um, what's really powerful about this, though, is that at any time I can make a clone of any optimization I'm working on. And I could run one, two, three, four, 10, 100 optimizations all at the same time through this interface. Running a lot could be a little cumbersome, but it allows you to explore with generative design in a really quick and easy to use interface. So in this case, um, I could um, run another optimization as is, or maybe I'll do something like uh, change the um, size of the uh, connections on this part. So I'll make this, instead of three millimeters of offset, um, a little bit more. And when we run it, we'll see that we've impacted the design in a way that provides for a bit more material or robustness around um, the part. So. So once that's set, I can um, run this design optimization. And I might want to change my mass target. So I could say make it a little bit lighter or maybe a little bit heavier. That's our optimization criteria right now. Um, fairly soon, we'll be releasing stress-based optimization constraints. And that will be um, a way to not set a target, but rather, with a safety factor, reduce the amount of material to a, um, the right amount of material. Um, you can change different material parameters here. But generally, you can launch an optimization like this. And while it runs, I'll just copy it again. So again, cloud-based. So we really don't have to worry about monopolizing the local uh, CPUs. It's really nice, because I can just keep launching more and more of these optimizations. On this one, I'm going to take off a design constraint. So I'm just going to delete that. And it's the same optimization, but without that design constraint. So um, while, the, while those run, um, this optimization process window appears. And as designs, as it starts to iterate, those iterations will be sent back here, which you can start to. Um, you know, visualize in, in the 3D viewer here. So I'll let those run, and, and while they're running, I just want to show you a little bit of our core technology. Again, I mentioned TrueSolid is our geometry kernel, and this is a really simple user interface that we use internally to play with it and um, show our partners uh, different features that it has because our product doesn't have all of our capability in it just yet. But I'll just open up one of those optimizations I've run locally. And I want to show you just some ways that I can create infills and what those look like. So what I've done here is I've run the optimization and filled it with a minimal surface infill, something self-supporting. And it's showing a preview of this uh, geometry right now until it finishes the final one. And I just want to turn up the resolution on that mesh a little bit. And uh, then we'll get to see um, it with more, more detail. But this preview is showing how, um, well, when it's finished, it'll be really clear. But there's essentially an infill pattern blending in perfectly with the topology optimized design. So just give it one second. 
we're essentially fitting thousands of triangles to volume data right now. And you know, this process will speed up as well as we, we um, further optimize our algorithms. But. So you can see here, we've really uh, integrated nicely highly complex gyroid structure into the original freeform optimized design. So when I talk about generative design being indeterminate, it couldn't be more indeterminate than this. I have keep uh, in regions, which are you know, perfect cylinders that have to be maintained. Uh, sharp edges are maintained here, you can see. But freeform geometry from topology optimization and then various infill patterns you can use in our system to, um, to uh, lightweight it further and, and maintain it uh, as a self-supporting structure. So that looks like all the time I have. Maybe I can answer a few questions because I kind of um, fire-hosed you guys with a lot of stuff. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them in the last few minutes. So. Yes? Where you uh, previously had <coughs> solid-looking structures, like with the struts, mm -hmm. were, they, were they actually solid, or did they have from the happening inside? So, uh, like these structures here? Or? Yeah, I mean, what, on previous examples, mm -hmm. when you were optimizing, you ended up with that three running struct across the bottom. So, are, they, are those actually solid within? They are actually solid. And what we're seeing is, so all, all 3D graphics is, well, not all 3D graphics, but the most common for CAD is to um, have triangles displayed on the screen, which, which are just rendering a, a general surface to you. And the data, the underlying data, is volumetric. And it is volume-based geometry. So we can export it as an STL, or we can, um, we, we allow some companies to interpret the volume data directly, um, so they don't even need an STL to manufacture it. There's one up there. Hi. Right. Hey, uh, do you have any other volumetric based structures other than like a gyroid? Yes, we do. We have um, quite a few. So why don't, why don't I just show if I uh, just quickly create some geometry here. We could go with a type of uh, lattice structure, um, gyroids or helicoids. Helicoids are pretty fun, but the lattice structures, you know, there's, there's a lot of optionality here. So it can be a little hard to calibrate off the bat, but let's see if I get something good. Oh yeah, that's way too dense, but we can do a stochastic structure. Um, let's see. How about if we make this um, a little bit larger. Oh, that's too big. So again, there's infinite possibilities with these structures, but we can, we can at least see it real quick. So, you know, here we have, you know, blending here. We have total control over how these joints blend together. We can, you know, um, we, we, we have a lot of optionality, but a lot of the lattice structures, there's, there's just a lot of customization uh, designers want to have. So all the features are built in here, but maybe um, I'll try once more to get a, a better design. Yeah, so here's, here's a random packed uh, lattice. And again, because it's all um, parametric and volumetric, you can go in and change parameters as needed. So um, yeah, so here's just a, a quick example. But it really, um, this is a, a, a random and, uh, or semi-random lattice structure. Okay, all right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.